21st, 1996. Okay, campers, rise and shine. For years, scientists have tried to figure out what keeps us up nights and what makes it so hard to get out of bed in the morning. Maybe that's why I tend to be up at night. I keep avoiding that getting up part. They're getting close. There is a direct connection between the retina in the eye and this pacemaker in the brain that controls the timing of when we go to sleep and wake each day. How are these all feeling? Pretty fine. Yeah. And the glasses? OK. Good. Tonight, the enemy right. of sleep. Light. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Directly or indirectly, insomnia can kill you. There is, for example, a rare genetic disorder which causes progressive insomnia under which the patient is less and less able to sleep until eventually, after about three years following the onset of the disorder, the patient dies. That, as I said, is rare. But the Department of Transportation, for example, estimates that there are about 20,000 motor vehicle accidents every year which can be traced to lack of sleep. A lot of those accidents also result in fatalities. Don't ask who makes these estimates or how they're calculated, but it is estimated that at any given time, 100 million Americans are sleep deprived. Indeed, a recent Gallup survey found that 49% of us claim to suffer from sleep-related problems. Indeed, of all the 4,000 or more nightlines that we have produced over the years, it is likely that none is more relevant to more people than this one. This may not be the most elegant way to introduce my Nightline colleague, Dave Marish, but it's appropriate. Having trouble sleeping? Here's Dave. The prehistoric human would be going to uh, lie down and rest, uh, kind of uh, getting settled in for the night, pretty close to sunset, I think, and would be staying put and resting and sleeping in a kind of uh, fragmentary way all night long. When it comes to sleeping, doing what came naturally to our ancestors, sleeping from sundown to sun up, is nothing like what most of us do today. We now go to bed much later. Our sleep uh, is very compressed. We are sleepy in the daytime. We drink coffee to overcome that. Our brains are running a little slower, as a matter of fact. Dr. Thomas Weir of the National Institute on Mental Health has scientifically measured the effects of when and how much we sleep on everything from hormone production to brain activity. He says when we stopped letting the sun dictate our bedtime, we lost not only hours, but a special quality from our sleep, a quality some experimental volunteers found after they awoke from a series of good 12-hour sleeps. They described a kind of crystal clear consciousness that was unfamiliar to them. In fact, it made me think that maybe those of us in modern times don't really know what it's like to be fully awake. What the modern mode of short, deep sleep has eliminated is an extended period of light, dreamy sleep that once punctuated almost everyone's long nights in bed. It's not really dozing. It's a quiet wakefulness, a kind of meditative state, that very pleasant feeling of rest. That state, that state of rest, has virtually gone extinct in modern times. So who's to blame for all this disruption? Considering the complexity of the physiological, psychological question, the answer is simple. This guy, the wizard of Menlo Park, New Jersey, the proprietor of the invention factory here, Thomas Alva Edison. Today, we are celebrating Thomas Edison's 149th birthday. Recently, the town of Edison, New Jersey, celebrated its local hero and namesake, standing in the shadow of the monument to the man who gave the world the incandescent bulb. On a night over 100 years ago, for the first time in history, that genius uh, lit a series of light bulbs on street lamps. This light bulb was made in Edison, Menlo Park here in 1881. It's the first light bulb etched with Edison's name on it. George Campbell is the curator of the Edison Tower. He says many of his historic bulbs still give light, like the eternal lamp inside the monument. 
and Tom Edison's legacy has turned the once rural darkness of his hometown into a non-stop parade of colors lit by night for people awake by night. Edison's invention of the light bulb has really allowed the hundreds and millions of us who are using artificial light every day to our advantage has had an inadvertent side effect that we may not have been aware of, which was to reset or shift our biological clock to a later hour. It's long been known that intense industrial strength fluorescent lighting can shift your body clock. But Dr. Charles Seisler has just published a study showing that even low levels of artificial light can affect biological rhythms. Dave D'Elsey is one of Seisler's human guinea pigs. They've got me in a room here with no windows and they're controlling the light exposure. So there's times when I really do lose track of what's going on outside. Seisler's study shows even the limited light from your bedroom reading lamp can convince your body clock it should stay up later. Or in the case of Dave D'Elsey, get up now in the late afternoon. Right now it kind of feels like morning. Human physiology accounts for Dave's morning feeling. Artificial light has reset his sleep-wake cycle, his circadian rhythm. We concluded that the circadian pacemaker in the brain is very sensitive to light exposure and that the principal synchronizer of our internal biological clock in modern society is actually artificial light. I usually go to sleep about uh, between 4 and 4.30 in the morning. I get up at least by 12.30. Doing their laundry after work, which usually means after midnight, is something James Burgess and Clea Davis have adjusted their body clocks to. After 18 years together on the night shift at an Edison auto plant, they've joined the ever-increasing population on the later shift. My nights is my days because I sleep during the day. Just like when people work during the day, they sleep at night. The problem is all the lights we have in our lives are consistently shifting our body clocks later, and... Because our internal clock is shifted to a later hour, we can't go to sleep early enough to get an adequate amount of sleep before we have to wake up in the morning. An impact that hits waitress Melissa Morrow from the late shift at the Edison Diner. I mean, I have class early in the morning, so I have to force myself to get up at 7, but I'm here until 1. So it's, it's pretty hard when I do have to do that during the week. Researchers believe the cumulative impact of working the late shift twists our body clocks and makes us shorter tempered and less efficient. It's almost as though Edison's light bulb has, has, has changed the motion of the planet that we live on because the way our body experiences that motion is by alternation of light and dark. And all of life has evolved in the presence of that signal. Lighting up the night is just one way in which we've changed our planet. Over the same last century or so, we've also added near constant sound and motion to the world we live in. Small wonder then that we often feel slightly out of phase or as if we're struggling to adjust. I'm Dave Marish for Nightline in Edison, New Jersey. When we come back, an author of the most recent sleep research, a patient, and a man who tries to use the new findings in the workplace. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by...